Well, and David, maybe this is a question for you to kind of start talking about. And when we talk about too much or too little of something, I think Mm -hmm. something that's often tied to the conversation around plantar fasciitis, um, as it's talked about, or plantar fascia pain, is what impact do low arches or flat feet um, have on that? And maybe on the other side, those high arches, this has been kind of, we've dabbled with this a little bit, but what kind of thoughts do you have on terms of what, what do we know about the relationship between uh, flat feet and plantar fascia pain or high arches and plantar fascia pain? Yeah, I think the question is bigger than the two categories as well. Um, Klein kind of alluded to this, but let's say we have too much ankle mobility, probably have some laxity. Things are moving around a little bit. Just I, What I tell people is having a lot of range of motion in and of itself is not a bad thing as long as you can control it. And if you can't control it, now we have issues because you're going to start doing things with other joints in order to make the motion happen in a smooth way. So... Usually, and this is more generally speaking, but if you have more mobility, let's say you are a little bit more flat footed, the ligaments, they're a little bit more lax, there's a little bit more going on, you're going to have kind of a greater arc of motion there, just in general. Um, That may be through the ankle, that may be through more knee flexion, that may be through more hip rotation, it could be a lot of different things going on. But um, normally, you're going to have a little bit more of a moment there. If it's a more of a flat foot pronation type presentation. Now, if it's the other way, you have a high arch. Again, generally speaking, you're gonna it's gonna be a little bit more taut underneath. You're gonna be in a little bit more of a supinated position, and at rest, that's where that midfoot subtalar joint everything's a little bit more locked out. And that's great if you're pushing off. You want to have tension. You want to be able to lever from that forefoot and really get off, and and push off. Um, however, if you're in that position a lot, you don't attenuate force very well. And so it goes both ways. And that's strictly speaking at the foot, but that can also happen, like Klein said, with a varus knee position. It's going to set you up for a little bit of a predisposition to be kind of on the outside of that foot anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think the question's so much bigger than just pronation, like flat foot, high arch. There's a lot of things that can go into that passive and or dynamic position. But generally speaking... Usually when it's a little bit more lax, you're going to have a greater range. You're going to move through a larger range. You just got to be able to control it. With having it a little bit stiffer, not moving through a full range, you may have to work on mobility a little bit more and or control elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think that's big. And something I think that you hit on is that's important is it's not so much the presence of a flat foot. In fact, when you when you look at the systematic reviews about risk factors for plantar fascia pain. It's not just the presence of a flat foot. That's not even on the list. It didn't even make right. the list, but what did make it is your ability to control those motions and how much time you're spending there during a movement um, like running and the vol- how much velocity it, it, you're driving into that position. So it's a lot more about control, which means it's not about your foot. It's about your foot, your calf, your knee, your thigh muscles, your hamstrings, like everything is involved because it's about the whole movement pattern and not about the presence of a flat foot. But what is what does make the list is what's called a cavus or cavus foot um, uh, arch profile and posture. And so that's more of the high arch people. Um, and so that's when, you know, if, the, if your foot never goes through motion to attenuate those forces, like you said, that means that the only thing that's going to take the stress is going to be the plantar fascia because the bones and joints can't contribute. So you only get the one thing. So sometimes those flat, flat foot might even help some people because look at the risk factors based on systematic reviews say that it's high arches, not low arches um, that play a role. And then it's all, everything coming together to control whatever movement that you have going on. Matt, did you have something? Yeah. And I want to add again, a lot of the evidence has been a little iffy on, Hey, a static foot posture. Although ironically, yes. as you mentioned, and as we mentioned, it's that high, some of the higher arch positions are actually increased risk. And I think you hit it on the head where you said, you know, that tissue's never gotten a chance to stretch or move very much. And so if you ask it to do that all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, yeah, that makes sense. Whereas somebody that has a flatter foot posture, they might have a little bit more laxity in that tissue already. So it's already going to be able to handle that stretch. That doesn't mean you still can't overwork it. And you certainly can. It just means just because you have flat feet, don't freak out. Same thing. If you have a higher arch, 
also don't freak out. You got to know, hey, there, it's never one thing. And that's that's the key. That was one of the big factors from these systematic reviews is it's never one thing. It's always a culmination mm-hmm. of factors. So trying to pinpoint one thing is not a great use of your time, but going, hey, I got a couple of these things. I might, you know, might want to start addressing some of those. That's probably a better way to handle that. Yeah. Go ahead, David. Yeah, and I, I know our niche is primarily running, but when you take a look at plantar fasciopathy, whatever you want to call it, you know, fasciitis, I think it's important to take a look at the direction of load too. And anecdotally, people that have had a little bit higher, you know, cavus positions in that midfoot, I've noticed it a lot too in soccer players and a lot of people that have to do these forceful um, horizontal plane motions, you know, where they have to go in the frontal plane, I mean, sorry, where they have to go um, into a very forceful adduction and or abduction moment. And they have to be able to control their limb as they move into that space. And if they can't control it and they're planting just really hard on those passive structures, that might lead to some other irritation in that area as well. And that might actually lead more to some of that fasciitis in some cases, you know, if it's an yep. acute ramp up and they're just slamming it into the ground yep. um, coming from an totally. angle, you know. That's what's challenging about the plantar fascia is it, it's this wonderful tissue that actually helps you transfer forces. So people are like, oh, I should cut this out, and they've done that. It's not the best idea because then you lose a method of transfer, force transfer. So when you're landing, right, this is what helps as you start transitioning through that, that gait cycle as your foot goes flat, especially as you get onto the forefoot. When you get onto the forefoot, the plantar fascia actually helps lock everything up. So as David mentioned, you can now push off from a rigid platform rather than – well, platform is not the right word. But like a rigid – what word am I looking base? for? A rigid foundation. base, a, a rigid foundation rather than kind of a more loose one. So you can actually transfer your force better. The challenge is when you're trying to do that in ways that maybe it's not set up with, like excessive frontal plane, side-to-side motion, you're really loading that, you don't have as good a movement control, that might be a little bit more challenging, right? So, you know, it's just asking, are you using this tissue correctly, I think is the big, big thing. And if you're not, which again, what good and not good will be very different for each person, that's probably where it's going to get pissed off. And again, the, the right. difference going, you don't know when that happened. And that's the really hard part. That's why history is so important going, what do you do? What kind of activities are you working through? What, is there any changes, things like that? That's why when you're working with a medical professional or kind of looking at yourself too, going, was there a change that happened? Or has this been this long standing thing that keeps getting annoyed? That's yeah. where it can be challenging. Yep. Yeah. 